so as we are to consider our uh, rectifiers, we are going to see that it is important for you to understand uh, the formulas, the most important part. We had uh, the part where we considered uh, or referred to the half-wave rectifier, the calculations that you might be given, uh, that you might need as you are working with half-wave uh, rectifiers. These formulas, they are not to be taken when calculating for a full wave, like what we are given on our question there. They are not supposed to be taken. There are some of these formulas that are the same, not all. So we need to understand now the relationship that we are going to have in terms of our formulas for a full wave. Uh, rectifiers, remember, uh, when dealing with a full wave uh, rectifier, that is uh, full wave rectifiers in this case. So in this case, I'm just going to refer to the calculations. I'm not going to go into the diagrams, this and that. I just need to understand uh, the formulas that we are going to need. We do understand that there are actually two types of these uh, rectifiers which are under a full wave. Okay, we can have a center tabbed rectifier. So we can have a center tabbed rectifier from the idea of uh, a center tabbed uh, transformer. So you're going to call this a center tabbed rectifier. Remember this one? It uses two diodes. It uses two diodes, all right? Uh, let me just separate these guys. I'm just gonna just do this so that we can have uh, the other part here, which is still on a full wave rectifier, but now we have got a bridge. So we are also gonna consider a bridge rectifier from a normal transformer that we are given, now we have to consider as a rectifier. So that is what we're going to have. Remember this one, it applies or uses four diodes in, in application. We are going to have this with what? With four diodes. Just like what we saw on a half wave, it's gonna be the same. The calculations, like what we're calculating, we are calculating the maximum current. And it's going to be the same thing. We're going to calculate also the maximum current this side. Okay, so we're going to talk of the maximum current, which is I max in that case. Uh, remember that our maximum current, uh, this one is not going to change, all right? Our maximum current is going to be given from the maximum voltage over the resistance. Remember, I talked about the having uh, the resistance at the output. Also here, we are going to use uh, the same formula. That is when working with the maximum value from what? Direct from the circuit. Then we also have to consider now our RMS values. Remember, we need part of the RMS values. RMS values can be current voltage. So we talk of I RMS. This one is not gonna change also, just like the previous one, 0 0.7, uh, 0 0.07 of the maximum current sim with the voltage. Uh, this one is not gonna change as what we had previously. Also this side, this one is just the same, even on a bridge, uh, 0 0.707 0 .7 of the maximum is the same also for the voltage, guys. So there, it is just a repetition uh, that we are having about these RMS values. Remember, I said from these RMS values, we can also determine the maximum values, the maximum values can also be obtained if we simply make 
uh, the maximum the subject we saw that previously i intro when i introduced uh this part of half wave if you still remember here maximum values were calculated from rms values this part is not going to change so we can also talk of what the maximum values there we can also talk of the maximum values which is 1 comma 4 1 4 of what the rms value same with the current the maximum current 1 comma 4 1 4 of the rms value which is simply this one is simply represents it represents the square root of 2 uh, we just hope with the time uh, all these formulas will be available uh, in our formula sheet so we can make the subject we can make the maximum value the subject does it the maximum voltage is it the maximum current we can make it the subject that's what we have there we can also talk or refer about average values remember we had the average or the dc values current and voltage the dc current and what voltage remember we talked about this so idc uh, which is the current in that case this time it is given as 2 over pi. Remember there, previously it was just maximum value over pi. This time it's 2 over pi of the maximum value. So this 2 over pi simplified will give us 0, 0.637. That is of the maximum value. Same with the voltage also is going to be this, which is going to be 0, 0.637 of the maximum voltage given. This is not going to change even when we are referring to the bridge. Remember, we've got two things here. Consider a bridge and a center tab. So it's not going to change on a bridge. It's going to be the same. So in this case, that is the same. All right. Let's consider uh, the other part. We also referred or talked of the peak inverse value. Uh, which is the peak inverse voltage, remember? We also referred about this peak inverse voltage. So the peak inverse voltage, considering that we are on a center tab rectifier, is two times the maximum value. So this is two times the maximum value, but on a bridge, it is going to be equivalent direct to the maximum value. So this is what you need uh, to understand when working with the full wave. Like I said, everything is just a repetition there. Then uh, we talk of the efficiency. So approximately our efficiency, it will be at uh, 81%. Approximately, we shall see that our efficiency will be 81%. Like I said, this part of efficiency i um, actually going to talk about this on a separate class, uh, which is on its own, but it's going to approximate 81%. Uh, the ripple factor, on the other hand, remember that part of the ripple factor. Uh, this is R or gamma like this. Uh, so our ripple factor, this time is going to be taken from the square root of who? the RMS, uh, the, of the ripple voltage to the average voltage that we are given, the square root of that is so gonna be squared like this, minus one. So approximately, if you are to have your calculations, you see that it will approximate something like 48% uh, like that, which is the same approximation of this other side, 0 0.48, which is 48%. Or a normal configuration, but you can actually use your formulas in the calculations uh, if you're given that or if you're given the ripple voltage just work from there uh, that is in this case all right uh, this is vrms i'm just gonna remove this then if it is the ripple just gonna use the ripple voltage as it is over what over vdc uh, which is 
important in your calculations to note between the two that this is just the RMS, the VRMS, then this one is the ripple voltage, this one. So please just correct this part. Okay. So meaning to say, with this, we can calculate any, then our output frequency, the output uh, frequency. So on a, a center tapped, and on this bridge, they are the same, but this time is equal to 2F. Remember, previously, it was equal to the frequency when you were dealing with a half wave rectifier. We had that as two as F, but this time it is equal to two F. With these calculations, we are going to work with a lot of things there. And also sometimes they might talk about the peak to peak value. Also those ones, we need to work them. Uh, understanding your formulas is very, very important in your calculate understanding these is going to be very, very important. So this is for a full wave. But like I said, a full wave rectifier can be given to be center tapped rectifier or can be a bridge. So you must understand the angle that you're working from, from a center tab, as we are given in this example, the tense ratio of the word, the full wave, that's the first thing, full wave, rectify, center tab transformer. So there are two things there to be considered. It's a full wave. But being a full wave is not supposed to end there. You need the connection of the transformer center tapped. Because there are two that we need to consider on a full wave. All right. So in Fig 4.2, 4 is 1 as to 2. That is the tense ratio is given as what? As 1 as to 2. So remember, the tense ratio, guys, it simply means 1 is to 2. 1 over 2 is equal the ratio of the tens there, that is primary over secondary, VP over VS, which is equal to the current of the secondary over the current of the primary. This is what we do understand. So we are given that the transformer's primary windings are connected across a 230 VRM at the primary side. which we can see in this case. Remember, considering a transformer, those are RMS values. If you are talking about these values here on this formula, these are RMS values. So we are given VP, 230 volts, which is the RMS value. There we know that current voltage there, there will be RMS value. So this is our connection. Then it is then later on connected to the output where there's a resistance of 50 ohms, this is what we are given. So the first question was on this diagram to calculate at the frequency of 50 hertz. Calculate the DC output voltage. Like I say, these will be at the output. So number one, we need the DC output there. With this information that we have, we are limited to this information. It's a center tab. Center tabbed. Remember, center tabbed. How do you calculate this? It is the same as even for a bridge. So that's the advantage of this VDC. It's the same, but that's two over pi times the maximum value or 0 0.637 of the maximum value, or you can use two over pi. All right. So with this, we do understand it has changed. As you can see, it's no longer the same as what we used to have on a, on a, when we're dealing with a, a half wave. It's, 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 it's different now. 0, 0.637 of the maximum value, which is the same as that one, 2 over pi of what? 
of the maximum value. So meaning to say there is a need first of having the maximum value where at the output, meaning to say talking of the secondary side of the transformer at the output, what is the maximum value? We do not have anything about the secondary side. Not talk of the maximum value. Remember, like I said, on a transformer, these are RMS values. So we can use the ratio to determine the secondary side RMS value, not maximum. All right. So 1 over 2 is equal to VP uh, over VS. Remember? So it's going to be VP over VS. All right. We already have the VP there. 230 is an RMS value over VS. So that's cross multiply. VS is equal to 2 times 230, which was going to give us uh, 460 volts. That is the secondary side voltage. at the uh, That is the output there. But as we do understand, these are what? RMS values. So this one, it represents an RMS value. So what will be our maximum voltage so that we use it to calculate the VDC? What will be our maximum voltage? We need that. Okay, so VM, the maximum voltage, we saw that uh, from our relationship, this one is not going to change. It's 1, 1,4. Uh, 1, 4 times what? The RMS value, which is the RMS value, is the VS of the secondary side at the output. So that was going to give us the maximum value. So that is times our RMS value of 460. Uh, that is going to be 650. So it also do not assume to be, to be, to be do not uh, like expect to be given that this is uh, this one is an RMS value. As long you are given values on a transformer here, the voltage is there the on the transformer that you'll be given VP, VS, the current, the, those, those are RMS values. So don't expect that they will write like this to say VRMS. Sometimes they'll just write 230. You're supposed to know what it represents and a RMS value. So that is what we have as the maximum value. We take it from the RMS at the second. This is at the output, not from the input. So that is uh, another part that I made to, to have this question because if you are using this uh, textbook of uh, the, this one, it's a new one, which is the TVET series. They just made a mistake there of using the voltage, which is not the one that you're supposed to have there. We are supposed to use of the secondary side. That is what we have there. The RMS voltage, this one, not the, this one of the primer, not two-thirds of the primer. No, of the second, we are on the secondary side. We are working on the output, output. So what is going to be our DC output? From the maximum now, we can calculate our VDC. So therefore, our VDC is going to be uh, 0 0.637 times the maximum value that you obtained here, which is 650.538. So once you used a wrong value here, this means this is going to affect our answer. It affects even here. So that's uh, a mistake which just happened. But these guys, they're supposed to revised actually because this 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 it's a revised textbook this one it's a revised one so it's supposed to show some some signs of revision uh anyways that is what we had uh that was gonna be uh 414 comma 393 volts so that is what how you can actually work out these typical questions so be careful be careful of your calculations that you're working with which part are you to consider you're on the output? Number two, the peak-to-peak -peak ripple in the output voltage. So it follows that for a, a full wave center tab, the peak-to-peak -peak voltage can 
recalculated, which is VPP, like this, it is equivalent to the maximum voltage. We're supposed to subtract the voltage drop at the diode, but there is nothing there. So we subtract what? As zero, because they, there will be nothing. There will be no conduction. So be, there will be zero voltage. So in that sense, it is just equal to the maximum voltage. And the maximum voltage is the one on the secondary, not the primary side. So we have got 650, this one, that we got off the secondary side. So it was going to be 650,538 volts. Number three, you are given to calculate output ripple frequency. If the load resistance is 50, as you can see, we are still having the same load resistance. They are saying of the same circuit, nothing has changed. What is the output ripple frequency? Remember, we said output frequency is 2 times F, which is the same for both a center tapped and that of a bridge. Output frequency is 2 times F. All right. So in this case, the output frequency is equal to 2F. And what is the our frequency? Initially, we are given our frequency being 50 hertz from the information. It's 50 hertz. So meaning to say it is going to be 2 times 50. And that will be 100 hertz. So this is our output frequency. So all this, it is about the calculations the formulas that you are to work with. So we're going to see how to apply these formulas in uh, many questions to, to come.